Roy Jones Jr. Are you ready? Boxing fans, are you ready? Presenting the undefeated super middleweight champion of the world. This is what the crowd's been waiting for here, and there's quite a buzz going on. Round number one was scheduled for 12. That's Paziaz in a red shorts. It's a left-right combination. A devastating puncher. He's never tasted punches that hard before, I can assure you of that. Who was equally elusive on defense. To this day, you're the only person in CompuBox history that went a full round without having a single punch scored on. I gotta tell you, in all the years I'm watching boxing and calling boxing, this is the fastest jab I have ever seen. That includes Muhammad Ali, it includes Sugar Ray Leonard, it includes Ray Robinson. Nobody has ever gone a complete round without getting a punch scored on. Like, you, you, you tell me he ain't the best power for You know one of the things that makes him special, Ken? He did everything wrong, or a lot of things wrong. Like only one other fight I can think of. Muhammad Ali. He could drop his hands, pull back, but because of his his speed, his power, his his timing, his reflexes, because of that, he could make wrong right. Oh, see, his kick is absolutely disgusting. That's a big right hand as well. Nice kick. Ooh -wee. One of the most stylistic Muay Thai artists ever. Compared to like watching Muay Thai in the States and then going there, the amount of kicks and knees that they're doing. Mm. I'm looking at fighting like, okay, like, when's the next punch gonna happen? These guys throwing kick after kick after kick for five rounds. Walcott was an all-time warrior, drenched in history and seasoned by fire. A left hook to the jaw. Walcott had proclaimed Marciano a hype job. A Walcott said before this fight, if I can't beat this bum, take my name off the record books. I guess he can punch a bit, but he can't box. I've never seen anyone easier to hit. September. 1952, Philadelphia. Experts rate the Walcott fight as one of the most exciting bouts in ring history. For the heavyweight championship of the world, weighing 184 pounds, the challenger, Rocky Marciano. Weighing 196 pounds, the heavyweight champion, Jersey Joe Walcott. They call Rocky the Brockton Blockbuster, and some of the fight experts say he's another Jack Dempsey. Jersey Joe dominated the early action, smashing Marciano with relentless combinations. Rocky Marciano was one of the uh, toughest men ever to fight. Many fighters fold when they're first tested, when they're cut and dropped. Rocky grew tougher. But he was one tough guy. He was 189 pounds. It was the first knockdown of Rocky's career. Marciano is now cut on the floor. The way he came back and the way he fought people First time that Marciano ever had been put on the canvas, took a five and came up, and from that time on, they have fought steadily and hard. But he liked it. 
he went beyond courage and, to, and to, he truly liked it. He liked the sport. He liked getting hit and he liked hitting. Absorbing Walcott's best shots, eating punches that ended other fighters. The consensus at this point was Rocky's got to knock him out to win. All the officials voted for Walcott this round. Twisted Walcott's face into pudding. Relentless attack. And now we're in round 13. At this stage, Jersey Joe Walcott is leading on all three scorecards. Seven rounds to five. Rocky Marciano has to knock out Jersey Joe Walcott to win this fight, and his corner has told him so. And he had a punch from hell called the Suzy Q with his right hand. One destructive blow changed the course of heavyweight history. Rocky feigned a left then delivered a sledgehammer right. The Suzy Q. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and out! New heavyweight champion of the world, Rocky Marciano. Rocky Marciano has come from almost certain defeat to knock out Joe Walcott. And the new heavyweight champion of the world, Rocky Marciano. When it ended, fight fans had witnessed one of the greatest slugfests in history. Rocky held the title until he retired, undefeated. Well, certainly, uh, if Pukal can uh, make an upset here, this is going to catapult him uh, right up the top of the ladder in the uh, world rankings. It's uh, going to be highly unlikely. Takeyuki was the second best Japanese kickboxer of the time. And the tremendous odds favorite. In kickboxing, you can catch your opponent's leg and follow up with one strike. But only one strike. Takayuki deliberately went for a second strike. A dirty move. Buakao was rightfully upset and responded how any proper legend would. By ragdolling Takayuki over and over. And, uh, this is going to be a, certainly a, a big test for Bukao. Raining knees and leg kicks. A blistering knee to the face sent the crowd into a frenzy. Years ago, when he worked at a manufactured home company, his buddies talked him into entering a local tough man boxing competition. I had to lose 20 pounds because I had a 400 pound weight limit. I weighed 420 at the time. And I went on a butter bean and chicken breast diet. And I hated the butter beans. They just got old or bland. Eric butter bean Edge, a mill room supervisor. Just a steel town boy looking for the fight of his life. Before you ask, the answer is yes. That's Mr. T in Butterbean's corner. But I pity the fool. Butterbean looking like he's trained a little bit. Meanwhile, he's another guy. Knocked dudes dead. He was, during those tough man con competitions, uh, he became, really did become something of a, of a folk hero to the folks that enjoyed that. Oh, two. Three, four, that's it, that's all, that's all, that's it, it's over, no more, no more, oh my god, what a punch, what a punch. Mr. T congratulated Butterbean, then it was on to the third fight. I said you can knock him out, and you know you can knock him out, because he's shut up, he's ready for you, he's happy, he think he got you, there ain't nothing, it's just one round, baby. The Butterbean! Next, a fourth fight in the same night. Mr. T fired him up 
and I will destroy any man who tries to take what I got. Look at the confident Escher with the hands down. Escher's been here before. A lot of pressure-filled situations. A big left by the Butterbean, and he floored the well. He became such a fan favorite that they made him the final boss in the Tough Man Sega game. Oh, it was really cool because I was still working a factory job at the time when it come out, you know, so. How many guys build mobile homes or have a video game out, so. After I won 18 Tough Men, they told me I couldn't fight in them anymore, and so I said, I want to go pro. Still working his day job, Butterbean decided to make the move to professional. Doug Norris. 305 pounds, Eric. Be. Just human nature that to root for somebody that, that is not expected to win. He doesn't even like his own name mentioned. He said, I'm better. I don't even like to think of myself as Eric Esch. He's, he's his right hand there. And he gets away with the windmilling. I hear this big muscle-bound guy's going to kill me and I end up knocking him out. Watching muscle-bound pros being dropped by the significantly rounder Butterbean was an instant draw. Well, he never should have slugged with him. He knows that now. It's over. He carried the tough man style into boxing. Four round fights, all action. The winner by a knockout victory, his record now 7 and 0, oh, Eric Butterbean. Yeah. The way I look at this fight, there's a lot of possibilities. There's a lot of X factors. Fury entered like a Spartan. Wilder knew his entire boxing future was on the line. He made it clear. This time, the only way he was going out was on his shield. Tyson and the Fury! setting the tone for a Zack Snyder 300-esque action sequence of a boxing match. Is Tyson Fury just too good for him? Is Tyson Fury just got his number? And is he psychologically somewhat unraveling here? That one big attack could have a very significant effect. Well, what about the fact that nobody thought that, that another heavyweight era was going to matter, right? I mean, let's be honest. Hoping to sap Fury's strength, Wilder targeted the body. But Fury quickly took control of the action. On the left hook to the side. Of the and beating Wilder okay, to the punch. Suddenly Wilder just looking a little bit more disorganized. Yeah, 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 disorganized and wild in the shot there. John looking for the right hand. He's gambling. A third round knockdown made it appear the fight was over. He's got him again. And he's holding on desperately here. Here he comes out with the right hand. I thought Deontay Wilder was finished in the third round because he got dropped mm. by Tyson. A shaky-legged Wilder survived the round. I said he ain't getting out of the fourth. And Fury is dominant, and in this fourth round, can he now go in there and finish this? How well has Deontay Wilder been able to regroup? You can't make a mistake with a puncher like Wilder. But Wilder's right hand is the great eraser. Incredible shot from Deontay Wilder. Able to wash clean the mistakes of previous rounds in one fell swoop. Who wants it most? Who's got the bigger heart? And now Wilder's looking to finish it. Fury's having to cover up. What a fight. Wilder is fighting, as I said earlier, for his existence the rest of his life. For who he is. That's powerful. But as he has done his entire career, Fury rose. And we are just about coming to the end 
end of the fourth round. A second knockdown. And quite frankly, Deontay Wilder looked awesome. He is tougher than hell and he is full of heart. You need to win great fights to become a great fighter. And what we have, it might be wild, it might not be cultured, but it's a great fight. He's right back in it now, Fury. We wondered whether he could regroup. He most certainly has done. Wilder needs to stay out of these clinches. This works in Fury's favor. The energy of the fight had flipped. According to the punch stats, Fury landing twice as many as Wilder. But Wilder's still there. Takes another big right hand. What ensued was a war for the ages. A back and forth, no quit brawl. How is he staying upright? On the receiving end of some huge punches. One of the greatest conclusions to one of the greatest trilogies in boxing history. Oh, oh. by Fury, and down goes Deontay Wilder. Fury dropped Wilder again, but again, the bronze bomber got up, showing endless reserves of heart. I've been in this business for over 25 years. That's the greatest fight I ever attended. We admire that. That is courageous, that is macho, that is bravery, that is awesome. The Gypsy King granted Wilder's request and sent him out on his shield. Heavyweight champion of the world. Gypsy King Tyson Fury. I mean, talk about it. Shot in the arm and what he means to the sport. It, it, it really is incredible. He's one of the all-time greats. Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King. To be honest, Davey, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Commentating on a Sanchai fight. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> Sanche, obviously, an absolute legend in the sport. Um, his fight against Pornson in Lumpini, wow. His next level skill was always on full display. Always fighting with such ease and comfort. A true warrior artist. He understood the value of winning the crowd. Depending upon where he was, he'd adjust his style to please that particular crowd. which I love. A nice elbow again! Win the crowd, and you'll win your freedom. I will win the crowd. I will give them something they've never seen before. Legendary John Wayne, creating masterpiece posters and thrilling news releases highlighting boxing's newest attraction, Tommy the Duke Morrison. Tommy earned the nickname The Duke 
because he was the great-grandnephew of silver screen icon John Wayne, who was also known as the Duke. So too soon, John down with a crushing blow to the midsection from Tommy Morrison. That one just caved his chest in. Tommy Morrison is on his way. The marketability of the John Wayne tie-in only further added to the Morrison mystique. When fellas get together, there is a good chance that there is going to be a knockout because that's all Tommy Morrison knows in 14 fights, 12 knockouts for the young 20-year-old from Kansas City. Powerful, accurate combinations. Big right hand followed up on the left by Morrison and Shelby. Oh, is it a seated position? So, knockout number 13, victory number 15. Aggressive. He's so mean. In the audience was longtime champion Julian Jackson. A legend in his own right, Jackson had reigned over the middleweight division for five years. I want Julian Jackson, James, Tony, Roy Jones, all the big name guys, because right. my name is big too, so I know we can make a big pay to get together. Two notorious power punching champions facing off in the square circle. Down and destroy his opponents. He ruled the WBA junior middleweight and WBC middleweight divisions for the last six years. Off the familiar words of referee Mills Lane, we are underway. Round one scheduled for 12 for the WBC middleweight championship. There it is, a big right here. can bang as we said you got to look for this guy early here he is early and jackson beginning to answer back after a rugged first round this one, and, and julius cut he goes upstairs no chance of south of oh. there but never forgetting what got him to this particular place. Hard work. He trains in the old school way. His is a body forged by nature, perhaps the true strength of Muay Thai fighters. What makes one person a champion and the other one not? There's certain people that grow up with a tremendous hunger when you grow up comfortably, that will produce a very balanced person. But it will not create the will and the determination and the hunger that you need to be the best in the world. to nature has given him a simple appeal, an appeal which hasn't faded with his champion status. To fight is a way of life for him. It is as natural as eating, as natural as breathing. It has been a part of his entire life. He quickly became known as the best striker in the sport. The beauty, the science of the eight lands on display by one of the best in the world, Fulham and now, here in Chicago, the heavyweight boxing title is at stake. Will Joe Lewis walk out of the ring as heavyweight champion of the world? 
We'll soon know. Well, there were history of black families, you know, poor black families that would, would get hope from just saying, hey, Lewis did it. I don't want to hear that you can't do this. Joe Lewis did it. A challenger from Detroit, Joe Lewis. And so he was that important. That's, all, that's the only point I'm making here. He was that freaking important that what they, fought, what they did, what they overcame, where they came from. When you talk about all the things that we're here to talk about, about character, about talent, about perseverance, about resiliency, about, about caring about more than yourself, about strength. When you talk about all those things that we try to say that we care about, he was all that. He was all of that. The Brown Bomber had captured the heavyweight title. He was champion at last. A living legend, the heavyweight champion of the world from Detroit, Michigan, the immortal Joe Lewis. Lewis would defend the title for a record 25 times before retiring. Next, he traveled to London to take on Liam Walsh. Davis at this point, that's a big left turn, and Walsh wants to hold on. Accepting the challenge of a hostile crowd, Tank obliterated the hometown fighter. And he puts him down with the left hand in the third round. The power of Davis, and Walsh just couldn't live with it. He stopped it, but when Davis unleashed the power shots, there was only going to be one winner. And Javonte Davis is still the champion. This guy's a bona fide superstar. And I, I would regard Lewis if he wins it, and I think he can. And I don't care whether it's Holyfield or Bo, he's got a good shot. A super fight with Razor Ruddock was set. The World Heavyweight title eliminator, as well as the Commonwealth Heavyweight Championship. It's Britain's Lennox Lewis. Harry and uh, very excited about the prospect of what I reckon is the best heavyweight fight we've seen in this country, probably since uh, the Ali Cooper fights in the 60s. Razor had gone the distance with Iron Mike Tyson. The fight would determine who would get a shot at the WBC World title. It's underway. Razor Ruddock in the white trunk in a clockwise direction away, theoretically, from Razor Ruddock's left. Lennox pounced, dropping Razor to the canvas in the first. Oh, that's a good over. He's down in the opening round. And he's hurt by that. The bell saved Razor, but not for long. What a big round for Lennox Lewis. Absolutely thunderous noise in here. Can Lewis build on that? Fantastic opening round. Oh, and Lewis gets through again. He's got it. Another knockdown. That's like a mandatory eight count. Lewis could finish this early. This is explosive stuff here. You, you beat Razor Rudder in two rounds to become official challenger for the WBC title. Finish him. The dramatic victory set the crowd into a frenzy. And he's got it again! It's over! It's over! Lennox Lewis! Has done it! Lennox Lewis will fight for the heavyweight championship of the world! Second round finish! Hands of Stone began a reign of dominance over the lightweight division that would last five years. You are a great defensive fighter, and I don't think people talk about that often. But you, you were able to stand in the pocket and make people miss you, and that was part of your, your offense. 
was having such a great defense. Duran is, is called. I mean, if we read the sports pages here, one of the toughest punchers uh, uh, for his weight is a brawler, street fighter. Somebody said it's like being hit by a rock to be hit by this guy. One knockout after another. Duran is called hands of stone, and he can really rip you. The left hook is his big one. Propelled by a fury unlike few have ever possessed. Duran ran his record up to an astonishing 82 and one. The greats like Joe Lewis, all of those great fighters from the 30s, Roberto Duran has qualities of each one. And hey, you're talking about a, a, a fighter that's only 20 years old, and you're, and you're comparing him with some of the greats of all time, the Robinsons, as you said, the Lewises, and the Ali's. Shows you what Henry a great Armstrong, fighter he is. Harry Greb, all of those maulers, fighters, men that stood right in front of you like he's doing now. He knows he's got this man in charge. He is punishing him. Hands of steel, hands of stone. Either way, he is one of the heaviest punches for a little man that's ever been seen. You're trying to take his home and his money and his wife when you get in the ring with him, he says. you got to kill him. I think his first loss was to Esteban de Jesus. He lost a 10 round decision. At last, Duran would get a chance to avenge that loss. The scene is Panama City. There's better than 15,300 on hand for this lightweight title. It is a big fight. It is revenge in the heart of Duran to stop this man for the lightweight championship of the world. Roberto Duran against Esteban De Jesus. De Jesus, calm, collected. Duran, hands of stone, ready to come out, looking. And the bell for round one. Esteban dropped Duran in the first round. They're both ex exchanging savage hooks. That's toe-to-toe -to -toe action. Duran would have to dig deep to overcome his rival. Both mean business, but Duran is throwing everything he's got in this punch. The Hazel's is a little bit more measured, a little bit cooler about everything. And he can beat Duran. He's the only man to have done it. He rematched against the Hazel's and knocked out the Hazel's uh, back in the days when they went 15 rounds. so far and it doesn't show any signs of letting up. He knocked the, the Jesus out in uh, Panama, out for us. He's down from the right hand. The count is being picked up. He looks like he's not getting up. He's sitting down there very comfortable. He's not getting up. He cannot. It's all over. It's over. They have awarded it to Roberto Duran. He keeps his title. Roberto Duran, the victor in his hometown in Panama. Hands of stone reigned over the lightweight division for five years as undisputed champion. Next, a match for the undisputed lightweight crown against undefeated WBA and IBF champion Julius Ndongo. Take it in. Few things in sports are better than a homegrown world champion carrying the pride of his people. As the large entourage comes right through the bowl section here at Pinnacle Bank Arena. Ndongo, Ndongo. <laughs> There he is, that man. Right. Right there. He figures he's stronger than you. Correct. And what do you figure? He figured out in the first round that yeah. he, he, he mistaken. Build as a war. What we got was another destruction. Some people get their lead left foot outside the lead right foot of a southpaw. Not Crawford. Fight fire with fire. <laughs> Terrence Cross.
Murphy is now the undisputed super lightweight champion of the world. From Omaha, Nebraska, Terrence Bud Crawford. The first man to hold all four belts in the division. This time, he wouldn't leave it in the judges' hands. He blasted Saur, knocking him down again and again. The White Lotus Buakau Porpramik, the first fighter to win the K1 World Max title on two different occasions. He was now the first ever two-time K1 Max champion. He is the only man to have become Max's champion twice. His celebrity status ballooned. As I said, Bukow recently voted uh, by International Kickboxer magazine as pound for pound the best fighter in the world. Now we have one other thing to do, and that's to fight Thomas Hearns. And I'm planning on breaking every bone in his body. Next. Hearns would participate in possibly the greatest fight in boxing history. You, our panel, come up with the best of the best. Select the greatest round of all time. Hot and heavy Hearns Hagler. Hagler Hearns. Hagler and Hearns. Those two guys, I didn't think the fight was going to go past that one round. And so the super fight between Hearns and Hagler was set. Confident Thomas Hearns would move up to the 160 pound weight class. And the long-awaited showdown was set. Keep that belt by your bed, because um, it'll be the last time you sit. Can't hear you. We pull a little baseball cap on war across the top. You knew, and I think Thomas Hearns knew, that it was about war with with Hagler. A great fight. Some of, the, some of the greatest fights of all time, if not the greatest, some people still argue the Hearns fight. By the mid-1980s, marvelous Marvin Hagler had taken on all comers. After 11 title defenses over five years, he stood alone. It was no secret each man had little love for the other. This fight was everything for both of their legacies. Two warriors of historic renown. Well, it's been voted certainly the greatest round ever, that first round when they went at each other like alley cats. Obey my command at all times. Shake hands, good luck to both of you. A lot of speculation coming into this fight, and they just went at it. Nobody could take Hearns' punches. It was later revealed Thomas Hearns broke his right hand during the first round. And for the eight minutes of mayhem is what it's often referred to. It's an incredible fight. Bang! Boom! Come on, man! Bang, Barbara! Oh, Hearns went oh, with the right hand! Hearns. Possibly the most memorable fight in 30 years of boxing on HBO. So is Hagler coming out like a bullet. A good left by Hagler, but Hearns didn't blink. There's blood all over Marvin Hagler's face. Can't tell where it's coming from. They, they're going to war. These are two of the best middleweights ever, and they're standing in front of each other going to war. There's a famous quote that, again, Goody Petronelli told us, he said that when he was in the corner, Hagler said to him, whatever happens tonight, don't stop this fight, I'm prepared to die in the ring. Round two now. Oh! The club, left hand by Hagler. Hearns decided to stand right in front of Hagler, and Hagler decided to stand right in front of Hearns. As you say, though, Hagler turning it into a street fight. Well, he turns right. He wants it to be a street fight. stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and see who's the bigger man. 
Oh my god, everyone's gonna die. Excuse me, Al. Hagler turns righty. I think this could be a key moment in this fight. For the first time, Hagler switching. Whoa. Whoa! Crazy, man. Oh, it was amazing. Nothing fancy. Once it starts, bullets are flying. He has heard in trouble on the ropes. Tommy trying to punch his way off the ropes. Hagler wants to keep him there. Goes to the body. Right now, that's exactly what it's being determined on. You can throw this. You can throw the strategy out the window right now. Another right hand. Hearns turns his back. Takes another right. Hearns in deep trouble again. Hearns is down. Hearns is down in the third round and on his back. He can't continue. It's Adler stopping under the third round. It didn't go very far, but it was a beauty. Arguably the most action-packed three rounds of boxing in history. Dubbed by boxing fans as The War. R.I.P. to the Marvelous One. David Tua was a ferocious power puncher. He is the puncher right now in the heavyweight division. I mean, they're going to be David Tua dolls. They'll be David Tua Pokemons. Comes right at him. Another big bomber. Ruiz is down. His left hand was one of the most potent and destructive weapons in boxing history. Tua came storming out. It's over. Tony Perez stops it. Still undefeated. David. They recognized the need to keep Mike busy, so Tyson fought almost monthly. That's his trainer, Kevin Rooney, who was a pretty decent welterweight in his day. Five foot ten. He is not a big heavyweight. He's only a kid, mentor, and father figure. Customato has been raising him in the fisticarts. Tyson was he was like a sponge. He just absorbed everything that Cus had to teach him. His marauding style, coupled with blistering speed and head movement, seemed unstoppable. You know, the head movement, throwing the punches with, with bad intention. Take your eyes off the ring card, girl. Watch the fight. We've had a good first round between Mike Tyson and his third pro opponent, Don Halpin. He definitely was hurt there. Looks apprehensively at Tyson. It's a good right hand. Halpin down. Early in the fourth, can Tyson finish this? I think so. A jolting little left hook that shook Halpin down to his heels. He quickly developed a reputation for first round knockout. Did you, did you ever stop and think like, man, how lucky am I that I ran into that man? No, no, he said he summons me. He summoned you. Whoa, he summoned you. Because if you take a boy and you teach him how to fight from beginning to end, Part of you is in him too, so that when he fights, part of you is in that ring. Yes, uh, Mike Tyson, in my opinion, the most exciting young heavyweight in boxing. He keeps punching. Schedule six, but hold on to your hats. Nobody thinks it's going to go that far. Down he goes, the left hook. Just buried him, dug him in the ribs. It was a Michael left and a right. Johnston went goodbye. Oh, oh, and it's all over. Goodbye. I hope he's not hurt because that was a brutal wide open punch. I'll tell you, Michael Jack Johnson earned his money the hard way tonight. And still undefeated, Mike Tyson. The man, in the truest sense, is an animal, but we say that in a positive way. To use the word animal might be a bit of disrespect, really, but he, he certainly was in the ring. I mean, he feared nothing, and he was brilliantly trained and managed. He was well looked after and well taught. Good luck. 
left hand, oh. and down goes right. Williams! That is the knockout of the year, if nothing else. A sensational, shocking, one-punch knockout of a normally iron-chinned, top-notch fighter. Frank Jefferson comes out. Can he stay on his feet? Oh, oh, what a left hook! What does it take for a real knockout puncher to get the job done? No count necessary. Derek Jefferson, I love you. <laughs> this is the greatest boxer of all time. I don't care what anyone says. Joe Frazier's left hook. Foster goes down again. It's all over. Joe Frazier wins by a sudden dramatic knockout in round two. Just kicked off Oh, question mark. He's wobbling. Let's see that again. A brutal elbow landed right on target. The vicious first round knockout. Pay attention to this question mark kick from Senchai. It's just a thing of beauty. He often frustrates his opponents with his flamboyant defense. Senchai has never lost in Thai fight. A perfect 61 and 0. A strike so quick, it is virtually unblockable. One of my favorite kind of knockouts, the delayed knockout. When the opponent takes a few moments to realize that they've been knocked out already. Tommy, the Duke Morrison is a young heavyweight starting to make some waves. Tell me about your future. What do you want to see? I want to see a big gold belt right here. <laughs> Tommy's a celebrity. He's a star. But he's also a young kid who has no clue how to handle it. It was life in the fast lane. Legions of women. Long nights of partying. Tommy's newfound fame enabled him to party the evenings away with different women every night. And they call us up at midnight, one o'clock, and say, hey, you better come and get your boy. He's laid past down on the floor. Fame and women have seduced and destroyed numerous rising stars. It's a tale as old as the sport of boxing. Through being very promiscuous, uh, there was a time that being with women was a priority in my life. Introducing Tommy, the Duke, Horace. Highlighting boxing's newest attraction, Tommy the Duke Morrison. There's a hand, Jake goes down and probably out. 
What a huge shot. Tommy, the Duke, Morrison. Tommy Morrison at 20 years young. They come into play in a hurry at 227 pounds. They're oh! comes another first-round knockout victim of Tommy Morrison. His career brought him celebrity status, first in Alabama, then all across America, and even around the world. He was a cultural sensation. His fame garnered him a boxing match with the WWE. He fought an up-and-coming boxer named Bart Gunn. Gunn had hired a boxing coach. He was confident, and he did a lot of trash talking, too. Judges at ringside, Chuck Wetner, Kevin Rooney, Gorilla Matsun. Here we go, round one, cross for all. What a beat Bart Gunn. His head actually turned around backwards. Now, at that time, I had a lot of pro fights, but after WrestleMania, everybody was going to talk about me knocking out Bart Gunn and dominating. They claim he's affiliated with gangsters and even worse. Others claim definitely that Sonny Liston is not entitled to this championship bout. He's not who we would want to represent us. He's not the kind of image that we want. You know, this guy's he's been in prison. He's illiterate. Comiskey Park, Chicago. It was September 25, 1962 at Comiskey Park, Chicago. The site of the most lucrative fight in the history of boxing. Floyd insisted Sonny only get 12.5% of, of the gross. The crowd booed Liston. No one wanted him to be the champion. The challenger, favorite of the odds makers, enters the ring. Sonny Liston, winner of 33 of 34 fights. 23 of them by knockout, the most formidable challenger the champion has ever met. Liston didn't care if Patterson was the fan favorite. This was Sonny's moment. After tonight, they'd have no choice but to embrace him. Pennsylvania, Sonny Liston. Describe him in ways that sounded like he was almost animalistic in the way that Mike Tyson was described early in his career. The champion is restless in his corner, the challenger placid. Sonny Liston moves out to face the big chance of his turbulent life. <laughs> Liston used his reach to bully Patterson. The Liston hooked to the head is the first good punch of the fight. One of the most devastating performances we've seen in the heavyweight title. Drubbing Patterson with thudding combinations. And Liston gets to him against the rope with lefts and rights. Ties him up. Won't let him get away. From King of the Streets. To King of the World. Patterson was a spinning duck. Patterson was out. Solid left to the cheekbone. Drop the champion. This time, two minutes and 11 seconds. The first round, Sonny Liston had become the heavyweight champion of the world. I mean, he had everything. Around Sonny Liston, the 21st heavyweight champion of the world, jubilation. Charles Sonny Liston had captured what was then known as the greatest prize in all of sport. Charles Sonny Liston became heavyweight champion of the world on the night of September 25th, 1962, in a fight that lasted only two minutes and six seconds. Saunders was undefeated and thought to be a true challenge for Alvarez. Canelo competed four times in 11 months this year. I mean, folks, if you have a champion in their prime and they're competing two or even, let's say, three, that's a treat. Four? I'm not going to say it's unheard of, but it is not common. He's not really. Oh, well, there's a right hand and moves him back. Good work for Canelo there. Canelo's looking for that counter right uppercut. He's already missed it three times, but he's thrown it with a lot of power. Like always, Canelo 
dictated the pace. Going to the body and setting up the uppercut. You see Canelo landing big shots and easy. The right eye of Saunders is swelling up. Canelo rallying his troops here at AT&T Stadium. And this is what Canelo does to opponents. He breaks down opponents, opponents and makes up. Canelo acting like he's already knocked him out. After the fight, his orbital was shattered. And it is over. They have stopped the fight. They have stopped the fight. It is over. Canelo gets the knockout win. I'm not sure what happened to the corner of Saunders. Nevertheless, the pound for pound king with another win in the low start. After the eighth round, Saunders was unable to continue. Saul Canelo. Canelo now possessed three of the four super middleweight belts. All that remained was a showdown with IBF champion, Caleb Plant. You look at the quality of opposition and now the length of it. And again, 31 years of age. I can also remind you, he has never been down on the canvas. The fight would determine the first undisputed super middleweight champion in the four belt era. Plant was undefeated entering the fight with 21 wins. A final dance with super middleweight history for Canelo Alvarez, who aimed to cement his status among Mexican boxers. The fight lived up to expectations, thrilling the sold-out crowd at the MGM Grand. Now these are heavy blows from Canelo. He's putting lots into these shots. Billy Joe saying, these aren't bothering me, I'm okay. And trust me, we can see and hear these shots. They're heavy. Each fighter brought their best. Yeah, not just a fantastic game plan here by Canelo, but the discipline to stay on that game plan throughout into those uh, championship rounds, as you mentioned. Caleb won a few rounds, but as the fight carried on, Canelo separated. In the 11th, Alvarez put the final touches on his latest fistic masterpiece. true warrior artist with the masterful skill of a renaissance icon. Da Vinci, Michelangelo, Canelo. Saul painted a picture of destruction. Coronation is complete! With the victory, Alvarez had proven again that he reigns over the rest. The best boxer in the sport, Canelo has only just now entered the prime of his career. Does he have the, the same length of resume as, like, say, a Chavez? No. But I think if you just add up the accomplishments and some of the rare air that he now occupies... As I think by the time he's done, I think it will be inevitable by the time he hangs up the gloves. This guy is one of the best boxers, and I mean this, in boxing history, and he is in his prime. Again, 30
31 years of age. He's not done, folks. I think he's got several more years of terrorizing some divisions. Canelo Alvarez. Nobody brings it home like it should. Nobody. Make it so.